Hey, how's it going? I hope everybody's staying safe. And you know, I've had a lot of people ask me about what it is I do every day to fight hair loss. And I'd say my routine is a little bit more extensive than most people. So I thought I'd go ahead and bring you guys along and just show you what I do on a daily basis in my fight against hair loss. So normally my routine is actually not that extensive, but for some reason around this time of the year, I get a little bit more shedding than I normally do. So I'll probably add a little bit more, a few more components to my overall hair loss routine that I normally do. So um, first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I do not shower. I'll shower the night before, but the reason why I don't like to shower uh, when I first wake up in the morning is because I feel it just makes my hair look kind of flat. So if I take a shower right before going to bed and I actually go to sleep where my hair is still a little bit wet, I'll wake up and I'll have this kind of bedhead look. So I'll just go ahead and maybe use a hand comb. And that's basically what I'll do all for the rest of the day. It's kind of a messy look, but I think it works well for me. It gives my hair a little bit more volume. So that's what I prefer. So I won't take a shower when I first wake up in the morning. And if my face is greasy, I'll just go ahead and wash my face and you know maybe use some like a tretinoin or zelic acid if I have some like outbreaks going on. So to get to get to the point, the first thing I do is that I'll always take a finasteride in the morning. And actually, if you see the setup right here, I don't have anything here like my toothpaste, my toothbrush. It's all on the shelves right here. But I'll have my finasteride and my pill cutter out because that will be a reminder for me to take the pill the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning. So like when I wake up in the morning, I'll go take a piss and I'll see the finasteride and they'll remind me, okay, I gotta go ahead and take this. And since I sleep with an alarm clock, I tend to wake up at the same time every morning. And this is kind of a reminder for me to take the pill the same time every day. Now, you don't have to take it the same time every day, but that's preferred. It does have a pretty short uh, half-life, but just for the sake of consistency and remembering to take the treatment, I try to take it the same time every day. So what you see here is actually a Proscar. This is a five milligram tablet of uh, uh, finasteride. And it's also available as Propecia, which is a one milligram tablet, but I prefer the five milligram dose because it's a lot cheaper. In fact, I can get a four month supply of this stuff for just uh, nine US dollars. So it's very, very cheap. But of course, I don't wanna take the full five milligram dose. I wanna take something that's closer to the standard dose for hair loss, which is one milligram. So what I'll do is that I'll go ahead and quarter a Proscar tablet. So this is a pill cutter. And what I do is I just go ahead and put the pill right here and then I just go ahead and hit this nice and hard so I get a nice clean cut. And this will give me a pretty even cut. So right now I have a halved Proscar. So I'm gonna go ahead and just very carefully put this guy right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut it again. And I have a quartered pill now. And I'll go ahead and put these guys away for later. One of them is still halved, I'll just quarter them later. So here is a quartered pill and I'll go ahead and just take it. and I took it without water because I have a pretty tough gullet. And for a lot of people, that's all you'll have to do because you know, finasteride is a very convenient treatment. It's also very effective. It works uh, very well for the overwhelming majority of people. I mean, I've been fighting hair loss for a very long time and I didn't even actually start with finasteride. I started with minoxidil, which was a mistake because minoxidil works independently from finasteride. So therefore anything you gain with minoxidil must be maintained with minoxidil. But finasteride is the uh, most important, important component of my hair loss routine just because um, if it weren't for, I mean, finasteride is what addresses the underlying cause of uh, hair loss, which is DHT, and finasteride suppresses serum DHT levels and scalp DHT, DHT levels anywhere from 40 to 60 percent. So that's the first thing I'm going to do throughout the day, and I'll go ahead and show you what I do uh, next a little bit later, so let's go ahead and move on to that. Okay, so I've already taken my finasteride, and like I said, I take my finasteride when I first wake up in the morning, and for me, that's usually 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., and then I'm gonna to wanna to apply my first batch of topicals. Now, topicals can take a little while to dry, whether it be like minoxidil, it can take as much as four hours, or if you're looking at something like stamoxidine or alpha dradiol, it can take just as little as 30 minutes. However, I wanna get on with my day, so I wanna to try to apply my first batch of topicals as soon as possible. So uh, 30 minutes to an hour after waking up, eating breakfast, if I do choose to eat breakfast, I'll go ahead and apply my first set of topicals. So here we are in my basement. This is also known as my alchemy lab and we have a refrigerator right here because I do like to keep these guys refrigerated because I think it helps improve the shelf life. And the first topical is tamoxidine. And this has proven to be a fairly decent hair growth stimulant. It's not as strong as minoxidil, but the good thing about it is that it works differently from minoxidil. It induces a state of hypoxia on the scalp, which for some reason causes hair growth. And since it works differently, it can be stacked with minoxidil, which is why I really like it. And it also works as a very good solvent if you're gonna use an experimental treatment like RU58841, which is a very strong anti-androgen you can apply to the scalp. So 
There's that. And another thing I like to use is Alfred Dial. And I should say, if you get this, uh, keep it away from a flame. It has a very strong ethanol scent to it, so I imagine it's explosive. So if you work with a lot of heat, you probably don't want to get your uh, hair too close to um, any fire or heat source. But anyways, uh, Alpha Tradiol has been proven to be a fairly effective topical anti-androgen in its own right. It's a uh, 5A reductase inhibitor topically on the scalp, so it's a good way to uh, locally inhibit the uh, DHT on your scalp via the 5A reductase pathway. And also likes to monoxide and it works as a very good um, um, solvent for uh, topicals. And the topical I'm talking about specifically is RU5841. Now, this is an experimental treatment only. It's not for human consumption. So just make sure, and it looks like a light one out there, but I don't have to worry about that. So just make sure that you use this for research purposes only. But with that out of the way, this is a very strong uh, topical anti-androgen. However, one thing to point out about this is that it's very molecularly unstable. So I will always buy a powdered version of RU5841. Uh, 58841. I will not buy a premixed solution because I don't think there's any evidence that that will last very long. So every time I use RU58841, I, uh, I mix a fresh batch. So in addition to that, what I also like to use as part of my concoction is uh, Retin-A. Now this is very good for the skin. It's been proven to uh, improve collagen production on the skin. So I'll also apply it to my skin at night. I don't like to apply it during the day because it does increase your skin sensitivity to the sunlight. So it makes you more susceptible to sunburns. But in addition to being very good for the skin, it's also been shown in studies that Retin-A, when mixed with other topicals like minoxidil, is more effective than just using minoxidil by itself. And even though I'm not using minoxidil right now, I am gonna use minoxidil Minoxidil later in the day, and Minoxidil has a 23-hour half-life when it's applied topically, so it will still be effective. So what I like to do is that since I don't like to worry about applying all these things at the same time, I like to uh, mix them all at once in a shot glass right here. So I'm going to show you what I do exactly. So I have a pretty big head, so I'll use about 6 milliliters of solution total uh, in order to um, get to full coverage. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the little dropper from this Demoxidine. And I'm going to first pour this stuff out, and I'm going to go ahead and use it to pick up some alpha tradiol. So I want about three milliliters of this stuff and three milliliters of stomoxidine. I'm going to mix the two together, and chemically they're similar enough that I can uh, mix the both of them and it doesn't cause any issues. Uh, minoxidil has a lot of propylene glycol in it and also takes a lot longer to dry. So I don't like to mix minoxidil with any other topicals. I want to get a little bit more of this. This one's running a little bit low. So there we have three milliliters of alpha tradiol. So let's go ahead and mix it with three milliliters of stomoxidine. So that way I'm mixing in a potent anti-androgen as well as a potent growth stimulant. So you're kind of getting uh, covering two grounds right here because you want to stop the hair loss, but you also want to do things to promote new hair growth. And stomoxidine, while not as powerful as minoxidil, uh, works well in its own right so you can mix the two. So like I said, this is for experimental uses only, and normally I have a research specimen, uh, a cat, but he's camera shy, so he's not here. So here's who I'm going to use. Uh, this is Stinky the Elephant, and he's the brave volunteer who is volunteering for the, the research product. And he's, he's volunteering to be my research specimen, so give him your thanks. But anyways, let's get him out of the way, and let's continue with uh, the topical solution. So normally, when you're actually creating a uh, topical solution with RU5841, what you're going to want to invest in is a 0.01 scale in order to get an accurate measurement. And for most research subjects, you're gonna need anywhere from 10 to 20 milligrams. Um, I have found that using any more than that does not do anything to promote uh, additional hair growth or stop further hair loss. It's just going to put you at a further risk of side effects. And most people who have used RU5841 report good success just using 10 to 20 milligrams. And I've also noticed that the people who have said they have gotten negative side effects from RU5841 are using ridiculously large doses, like you know, 100 to 150 milligrams. So you are going to want to scale. But for me, I value convenience. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and use this. This is a 10 milligram scoop. Now I should mention that this scoop is a measurement of volume rather than weight. So it's not going to give you a 100% completely accurate measurement, but I find that it's close enough that it doesn't really matter. And you know, I don't want to have to like grab up my, I mean, I do have a scale but I don't like having to grab it out every day and worry about like you know uh, getting an exact measurement so I'll just go ahead and use a scoop and whether or not you want to use a scale or a scoop 
it's up to you, but if you want a completely accurate measurement, uh, this will give you just a measurement of volume and not weight. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take 20 milligrams of volume, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab this guy right here, and I'm gonna dip it in to the shock glass that has the stenoxidine and alpha tradiol in it. I'm gonna grab it again, right here. And then lastly, since I said tretinoin has its own benefits when it comes to promoting hair growth, I'm gonna go ahead and just take a little dab of this. And this isn't like scientific or anything, this is just a guesstimation because tretinoin is pretty powerful and this is like a 0.025% solution. There are stronger doses than that, but you wanna be careful not to get the really strong ones because this is a skin exfoliator, so you're gonna have a lot of extra dandruff and your scalp may burn if you use too much of this stuff. So I'm just gonna take a little tiny drop of this. Let's see, there we go. Okay, and let's mix this guy together. And you know, I like to apply these topicals as opposed to minoxidil earlier in the day because like I said, they dry a lot faster. So if they dry in 30 minutes, that means you can be good to go after having your morning coffee and you don't have to worry about your hair looking really greasy. So normally I would use a mare to apply this, but you know, I've been using this stuff for so long that I can just kind of feel around my scalp. So let's go ahead and apply this stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and focus mostly on the problem areas. So I'm gonna go ahead and Focus on the center of the scalp and also around the hairline and the crown, uh, just the places where I uh, am most sensitive to hair loss. I mean, I use usually when I do lose it, I mean, when I was losing my hair back when I first started the battle, it was my hairline that really got the worst of it. And I ended up getting a hair transplant eventually. Um, but still, in order to prevent any further temple recession, I like to try to really get a lot of. Uh, topical solution in this area. And also you'll notice that I'm really massaging it. And I'm not just pouring it in. If you just pour it in, uh, it's not gonna absorb very well. It's just gonna go ahead and pour down your uh, forehead. So you don't wanna do that. So I wanna get in some in the back of the scalp too, cause I, uh, that is also a problem area for a lot of men, myself included. And this stuff, it smells kind of strange when it's mixed together. Cause you know, the Samoxidine smells really good. It actually kind of smells like a salon but then the alpha tradiol just smells like pure rubbing alcohol. So try not to get this stuff in your eyes. So I have pretty long hair right now. I haven't actually been able to get a haircut just cause you know all the barber shops are closed cause you know, you know what's going on right now because of the lockdown and everything. So I try to part my hair and make sure I get the dropper directly on the scalp and I just squeeze it very, very gently. And you know, you can use either one of these or you can get like a recycled one from a liquid minoxidil package. Uh, they're very common, or you can just buy like one from like Walgreens, or you can buy one from like Hobby Lobby, or uh, just Tesco, wherever it is you live. They're pretty common, or you can just buy them from Amazon. So, almost done. Just got a few more droplets to apply. All right. And it's a good thing this stuff dries pretty quickly because it does make the hair look kind of bad. Like whenever my hair is wet, um, it really makes it easier to see the scalp. So like if I, after I take a shower, it really looks bad. And that's why I like to try to avoid like hair gels, hair sprays, because I find that when the hair sticks together, it makes it much, much easier to see the scalp. And I have fine hair as it is. And fine hair isn't a side of uh, hair loss, that's just a genetic thing. Um, you know, even a lot of women have fine hair, but if you are losing your hair, having fine hair makes it even worse. So I'm just trying to get full scalp coverage just so I have a nice peace of mind. And I think that's about all of it right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use a, uh, actually, looks like I don't have a towel, but that's okay. I'll go ahead and grab a towel later, and that's just to pick up any extra stuff that falls onto my forehead. And uh, just make sure you massage it in really well. And it's going to take about 30 minutes for that to dry, so let's go ahead and do something to kill time in the meantime. All right, one thing I forgot to mention in my last video is that if you do use something like RU5841 or any topicals for that matter, just make sure you rinse your hands thoroughly afterwards, because otherwise... You know, like I said, RB5 and F1 is a strong anti-androgen. So let's say what would happen if you uh, applied it and had it on your hands and had to use the restroom afterwards. So that could be, uh, that could be pretty um, questionable what might happen. So just make sure to wash your hands thoroughly. So like I said, it takes about 30 minutes or so for these topicals to dry. So I figured I'd go ahead and kill some time. And a great way to kill some time, especially during this whole period of social isolation, is to do some safety, squat, uh, safety bar squats. And the reason why I like this is because you don't need a spotter. Um, if you fail, you can either just let go, uh, grab a rack, or you can push up on your knees. Both will work. So it's easy to go really, really heavy with this. You don't have to worry about it since it's pretty easy to get out of movement. And this is uh, not as easy 
as doing a barbell squat. In fact, it's about 10% harder in terms of how much uh, weight you can lift. Uh, but that's okay because it does put a little bit more emphasis on the back extensors and the lats. So let's go ahead and try, uh, well this is 320 pounds. So let's see, four or five reps or so, we'll see. one. That's 320 pounds for five reps. So I'll do a few more of these. We're not going to film them. I'll give this some time to dry. And I'll check in back with you guys when it's time to apply some minoxidil. All right, I'm back in my basement with my friend Stinky the Elephant, my research specimen. But right now, I'm not going to be using a experimental treatment. I'm going to be using an FDA-approved treatment. This is minoxidil. The trade name is Rogaine, aka Regain, if you live in the UK or in the European Union. And I recommend strongly that people go for the generic variant because the generic variant is exactly the same as the trade name, but oftentimes it's about one third the price. So it's a lot cheaper and it's the exact same drug. A lot of times it's even made in the same factory. And the same thing goes for like finasteride or anything. Go for generic if you can. I mean, all the generic means is that it's off patent. And these drugs are uh, common enough that they're very, very rarely counterfeited if ever, because it would just be too expensive to counterfeit it. And they're also cheap enough as it is. So anyways, going over minoxidil, this works as a hair growth stimulant, and this is the best hair growth stimulant that's out there, which is a bit disappointing because this has been around since the 80s. This is the first FDA approved treatment. And this looks like a bottle of liquid minoxidil, but here's a secret. This is actually minoxidil foam. It's minoxidil foam that I applied heat to via a hot air dryer and I turned it into a liquid. And the reason why I did that is because the problem with regular minoxidil is that, well, first of all, if you're allergic to propylene glycol, uh, that could be a problem because liquid minoxidil has a lot of propylene glycol in it. And the biggest problem I have with it is that it takes forever to dry. I'm talking about four hours and it leaves a lot of disgusting residue. Now, granted, anything you apply to your scalp will probably leave some residue, especially since it might dry out the scalp a little bit and you might get some dandruff. But a lot of the dandruff you get is just going to be the dried residue of the topicals that you're applying. So it's been... Uh, um, it's been a few hours and um, all the other topicals I've uh, applied have already dried and absorbed and everything so I can now safely apply minoxidil. But the good thing about the minoxidil foam is that it will dry in like 30 minutes again as opposed to an hour and that's really good because if I'm using this late at night I don't want to go to bed with a really uh, greasy head of minoxidil otherwise it'll just get on my pillow and then if I'm turning around that means it'll get on my face. And, you know, I don't want this crap on my face to begin with. Although some people do apply this to their face for uh, beard growth, but that's getting a little bit off topic. So anyways, I apply this the same as I would any other topical. So I'm going to try about like four to six milliliters to get full scalp coverage. So uh, this stuff, actually when it cools down, it could turn into a foam a little bit again. So just make sure you apply it quickly if you're going to dissolve uh, liquid, I mean foam minoxidil into liquid minoxidil and it doesn't do anything to hurt the quality of it and because like when you use foam minoxidil and we'll apply it to the scalp just the heat of your scalp will already turn into a liquid so you're not like reducing the potency of it you're just applying something to your scalp that will dry a lot quicker and truth be told I don't actually go to bed with this stuff on so I will be going to bed in a few hours but before I go to bed I'm gonna take a shower and I'm gonna rinse all this crap off so I can just go ahead and begin the process anew tomorrow. So again, I'm massaging this into my scalp really thoroughly. And you know, if you do take a shower in the morning, that's fine too, because you know, this stuff, like I said, it dries pretty quickly. So just as long as you apply it um, and give it enough time to dry, you can safely sleep with it without having to worry about like it getting on your pillow or like getting on your face. 
but uh, just make sure, like again, rub this really well into your scalp. I'm gonna go ahead and use just one little more droplet. And normally I'd use a mirror, like I said, but you know, I've been doing this for so long that you know I know exactly where all the problem areas are. I just kind of feel around for it in the scalp. I just part my hair and it's good to go. All right, so cosmetically, the stuff doesn't look good, so it's good that it dries pretty quickly. So minoxidil is the first thing I ever used for hair loss. I used it before uh, finasteride just because it's very readily available. It's been over the counter in the United States since 1996. However, you know, I've said this a lot, do not start with minoxidil first. The problem with minoxidil is that since it works differently from finasteride, everything you gain with minoxidil is going to be dependent on minoxidil. So uh, the way it works is that it helps uh, stimulate the growth of the cells DHT is trying to destroy, the dermapapilla cells. And it works in a way that where we don't fully understand the mechanism, but we know it's not hormonal in any way. So if you're using something like uh, like RU5 and 841, that's similar enough to finasteride that you could probably safely drop one of those and still maintain the gains from the other because they both work hormonally. Although uh, RU5 and 841 is a topical and androgen as opposed to finasteride, which is an oral 5A reductase inhibitor, which indirectly inhibits um, conversion of, which directly inhibits the conversion of testosterone into dehydrotestosterone, and that's the really bad one. But um, the problem with uh, minoxidil is that when you start it, you have to stick with it for life if you get results. So unless you're like someone who's like really, really young, let's say like you're 15, 16 years old, and your doctor may decide that finasteride isn't a good choice for you because he's worried about how it may affect maturation because DHT does play a role in pubertal development. And a case like that, maybe you want to start with minoxidil just to buy yourself some time until you're old and mature enough to start with finasteride. But otherwise, you should just start with finasteride and you know give it at least six to 10 months before you decide whether or not to add any adjunct treatments into your routine. So after six to 10 months, if you're not satisfied with the results, maybe consider adding a minoxidil win. But one thing to keep in mind about any of these products is that they will not necessarily promote hair regrowth. So a lot of people will not see new hair and they'll assume, okay, it's not working. But for most people, all these products will do is stop and just will just stop further hair loss. Like in the case of finasteride, uh, the clinical trials show that only about 33% of people got any new hair growth. So don't like take this stuff expecting to like uh, regrow your hairline or get any substantial hair regrowth. The best thing most people can hope for is just to prevent hair loss from getting any worse. So if you do have substantial hair loss, go ahead, get on treatment, get your hair loss under control, but you may wanna consider start saving up for, for something like a, uh, uh, an FUE hair transplant or an FUT, depending how far uh, gone you are. So I'd definitely look into that if you're looking to um, uh, regain any substantial uh, scalp hair loss. So anyways, that's all I'm gonna say about this. I'm gonna give this a little bit of time to dry and then I'm gonna go ahead and take a shower and head to bed. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, so I actually let that minoxidil sit for about four hours, although sometimes I'll let it sit for just two hours. And I find that even though like the uh, advisory panels say, leave it on for four hours for maximum absorption, I think I do get a good enough absorption uh, just leaving it on for a couple hours. Although ideally it should be left on for four hours, especially if you're using it just once per day. Speaking of which, even though the recommendation is twice per day, uh, those recommendations are based off of oral minoxidil lonitin, which has a half-life of about seven hours. Minoxidil has a half-life of about 23 hours, so if you talk to most dermatologists or hair transplant surgeons, even they will tell you just once a day is sufficient, and that's good because minoxidil is kind of the pain in the butt to use, so if you're going to commit to using something for life, then you probably want to make sure you um, want it to make it as easy as possible. So for me, once per day is just fine. I've been using minoxidil for over a decade. I've never had any issues with that. So. Uh, the problem is, is that after I shower, is that there will still be a lot of residue in my hair. So what I like to use is something called a shower comb. And it's kind of like this uh, fine tooth, hard plastic comb. You can buy it at like any um, uh, cosmetic store like Ulta, or you can buy it on Amazon. And what I'll do is I'll just put a towel on my shoulders like this, and I'll go ahead and just scrub my hair really well. And the towel will pick up any dandruff so it doesn't get on my chest hair or anything like that and I'll just comb it really well, and then I'll go ahead and wash out any excess dandruff on the comb, kind of scrape it off like this. And I'll just scrub it nice and hard like this, and yeah, if I see any excess dandruff, there's not that much today, but sometimes I have some big chunky flakes in there. And this is a really good way to get rid of the dandruff because the thing about traditional anti-dandruff treatments, like you know, if you're talking about like a Perithian zinc shampoo, or like, you know, sell some blue head and shoulders, those kind of things, is that 
Um, the dandruff you get from minoxidil and topicals isn't really like real dandruff. I mean, sometimes it is. What it is is just the dried residue of the topicals you're applying. So sometimes traditional anti-dandruff treatments won't work as well. But as far as the shampoo I will use when I'm in the shower, I mean, sometimes I'll use Nizoril uh, to help control my dandruff because, um, you know, my doctor did diagnose me with dermatitis a long time ago, although that's really well under control. But usually I'll just use a... Uh, just a high quality anti-dandruff shampoo, like, you know, head and shoulders, cell some blue. I mean, sometimes I'll use a salicylic acid shampoo, like T-cell or a coal tar shampoo. Uh, but I do shower uh, every day and I'll do it right before going to bed. Cause like I said, at the beginning of this video, I find that if I shower in the morning, then my hair will just be flat. So what I'll do is that I'll go ahead and I'll wet my hair and then I'll, uh, let's see, oh yeah. And then what I'll do is that um, when I wake up in the morning, maybe I'll apply a little bit of this stuff. And uh, this is called Derm Match, and I made a video about it. And what it is is that it's a concealer, so it kind of buffs up like um, your hair a little bit. And what I really like about it compared to other concealers is that it doesn't get directly on the scalp. It just buffs up the hair that's already – it just buffs up the hair as opposed to like kind of coloring in the scalp. Uh, so therefore it doesn't get in the way of topicals and I won't always use that because it is a bit of a pain in the butt to use and also uh, using too much can give you kind of like a kind of like a dirty uh, concealer look which you don't like uh, but compared to other concealers I think Derm Match is definitely the best so um, other than that when I wake up in the morning you know I'll just wash my face really well and you know I'll, uh, I'll apply like you know sunscreen if I'm going to go outside um, but I'll just go ahead and rock the bed head yet look and when I go to bed I'll actually go to bed with a slightly damp scalp I mean not like sopping wet because I don't want to like, drench my pillow and that will really help me uh, achieve that bed head look which I like in the morning so anyways uh, it was a real pleasure showing you guys like what I do on my uh, daily routine and you know it differs from time to time sometimes I'll just take you know minoxidil and finasteride I mean those are the two treatments I've been totally consistent on but in, during times of the year when I experience a little bit more shedding that's when I'll uh, add a few more uh, adjunct treatments to it and I just want to show you guys how I do it conveniently how I do it effectively and how it's not a real big uh, detractor from my routine so that you guys can uh, go ahead and incorporate it in your own routine as conveniently as possible but anyways uh, you know we're under a uh, lockdown so I'll be back with more content soon I hope you guys found this video informative and stay safe all right take care